All right, 7.4 solving polynomial equations in factored form. Uh, first, some vocab terms. Something's in factored form, or excuse me, a polynomial's in factored form when, well, let's say when a polynomial is written as the product of two factors, or two or more factors, then it's in factored form. All right, and we put things in factored form so we, a lot of times so that we can apply the zero product property. Zero product property says, um, let's say you have uh, two, two numbers, A and B. So when A and B are real numbers, and really all that means is that um, they are numbers that uh, you're used to using. They are not imaginary numbers. So if you're not familiar with imaginary numbers, then um, A and B could be any number that you've used in the past. Okay? So A and B are real numbers. All right? Um, so if that's the case, then the zero product property says if A times B equals zero, then A either has to equal zero or B has to equal zero. In other words, if you're multiplying two things together to make zero, one of those two things must be zero. Okay? All right. Let's try the last one here. Uh, roots. Roots are just solutions of a polynomial equation. So if you have a polynomial, the solutions are called roots. All right, so um, if it says solve each equation, it could, uh, like these directions here, solve each equation, it could actually mean, uh, it could say find the roots of each equation. It would mean the same thing. Okay, so to solve an equation uh, or a polynomial, we like it in factored form. We like it written as the product of two or more factors. Okay, we like seeing it, an equation say equals zero when it's a polynomial because we can apply the zero product property. So this equation, 3x times quantity x plus 7, is already factored because we are multiplying 3x times x plus 7. So when you see these parentheses, unless you see an addition or subtraction sign in between those parentheses and the other numbers or variables, then it's factored. Okay, And it's equal to 0, so you've got to be pretty pumped there. It makes it a lot easier. Okay, So what that means is if we were to think of this as our as our a, actually let me write it right below here, if this is our a times our b, where the parentheses are our b, and that equals zero, the zero product property says, then one of those has to be zero. And so what we do to find the roots or to solve this is we say, okay, 3x could equal zero. And when 3x equals zero, that means x must be zero. To solve this equation, we divide both sides by three, okay? And we also know that x plus 7, this other piece right here, could equal 0. And if x plus 7 equals 0, we subtract 7 from both sides, we get x equals negative 7. So my roots or my solutions to this are negative 7 and 0. Okay, and I put them in numerical order from smallest to largest. Okay, and then I put brackets around them. Okay, there's set notation there. Okay. All right, so if I look at this one, uh, this next one, x times quantity x minus 2, note there's, no, there's not an uh, addition or subtraction between the variable x and the parentheses. So this x is one factor, and this x plus 2 is another factor. And they both equal 0. So in other words, we have a times b equals 0 again. Okay? And so if you can think of that, well... If a, if, if the x is a, okay, then x would have to equal 0. We set it equal to 0. And if b, or in this case, x minus 2 equals 0, set that equal to 0, and we find x equals 2. So my solutions, 0 and 2. So x is equal to the set 0 and 2.
All right, so hopefully you're starting to see this and seeing the patterns here. This last one, note we are taking x minus 8 and multiplying it by x plus 1. It is factored. Okay, we see our parentheses. It equals 0, so that means if this is a and this is b, we'd have a times b equals 0. Okay, x minus 8 equals 0. So x would equal 8. And x plus 1 equals 0. So x would equal negative 1. Okay. My solutions, x equals negative 1, you notice my brackets get really ugly, and 8. And you know what, a lot of teachers may not have you write it in set notation like that. They may just say, hey, this is fine right here. Okay. In fact, sometimes I just do that. Okay, so hopefully you'll, before you try these, you'll actually, or before you watch me try them, you'll, try, you'll pause your video. Okay. So looking at this, notice it gets a bit more complex. 4x minus 5 times 4x plus 5. But we still really have the same thing. We have a times b equals 0. There's a, there's b equals 0. So we still set it equal. a equal, equals 0. So in other words, 4x minus 5 could equal 0. And we solve. What I like to do with my students, I like to tell them, hey, there's really two steps involved in solving this equation. The first step is to add 5 to both sides. Okay. The second step is to divide by 4. So if you say plus 5 divided by 4, that actually is your solution. Okay. If I were to actually uh, solve this, well, you notice, okay, well, I add 5, so I get 4x. I divide by 4, I get x is equal to 5 fourths. It's the same thing as saying positive 5 divided by 4. So if you can verbalize your steps, it makes it a lot easier. You can just write your answer down. So the two steps here, I'd subtract 5. I'd divide by 4. Therefore, x equals negative 5 4. And this particular problem, notice you have the positive and negative value of the same number. So in math, I like to think because we sometimes we like the shortcuts. Some people may say it's because we get a little lazy. But rather than writing 5 fourths twice, we just say it's positive and negative 5 fourths like that. Okay, so that's another way of writing that out. In fact, you'll see that a lot. That means just positive 5 fourths and negative 5 fourths. Okay, so let's try another one here. x minus 3, quantity squared equals 0. Really, that means x minus 3 times x minus 3 equals 0. And so what we do here is we say, okay, well, x minus 3 equals 0, and we solve x equals 3. And really, there's no need to do that again because those are both the same thing. So we only have one solution, but it appears twice. We call this a repeated solution. And a repeated solution, when you get to uh, Algebra 2, you start finding out that repeated solutions actually do special things. So when you get to x equals 3, uh, when you were to graph that, you would either have... Um, maybe your graph would change directions or you'd have a point of inflection, maybe where your graph does something like that, okay? It will do something weird at 3, okay? And you'll find that out in the next lesson, or the next uh, level there. All right, so notice here I have now three sets. I have x minus 5, I have 7x plus 6, and I have x minus 1. So it's like I have an a, b, and c, but we're still multiplying, right? Okay, so one of those three would be zeros. So Oops, sorry about that. If x minus 5 equals 0, x equals 5. There's one solution. If 7x plus 6 equals 0, x equals, well, we subtract 6 and divide by 7. And if x minus 1 equals 0, we add 1 to both sides, we get x equals 1. So our solutions, 5, negative 6 7, and positive 1. Notice three solutions there. All right. This next one, we have 1, 2, 3, 4 solutions. Right? Four things you're multiplying by that all contain x's. Okay? So we have 1 fourth x equals 0. So 1 fourth times what is 0? Well, x is 0. Don't let the fraction scare you. We have x plus 8 equals 0. 
so x would have to be negative 8. We have x minus 1 equals 0, so x would have to be 1. And we have 2x plus 9 equals 0. Two steps there, subtract 9, divide by 2. x is equal to negative 9 halves. Okay, so those are supposed to be and symbols. Those are my solutions. Okay, and if you put it in set notation, you'd have your negative 8, negative 9 halves, 1, or 0, and 1. All right, let's do the last one here. Think to yourself, how many zeros are there in this one? Hopefully you've answered that question. There are two zeros, that one and that one. Notice the one half here doesn't have an x by it. So since it doesn't have an x, we kind of ignore it when we're finding the roots. So we have x minus 4 equals 0, which means x would have to be 4. And we have x plus 1 equals 0, which means x would have to equal negative 1. Those are our two solutions. Or negative one. Okay, so so far what we've done is we've been able to find solutions when um, something's been given to us in factored form. Sometimes, most of the time, we're not given the problem in factored form. We're not given a polynomial in factored form, so you have to factor it to solve. Okay, so really there, uh, when you're looking at a polynomial, you're looking for two things. Does it equal zero, and is it in factored form? And so if I were to say focus in on this one right here, does it equal zero? Yes, all right. If it doesn't equal zero, then you have to move things around until it does equal zero, okay? And is it in factored form? Meaning, do you see parentheses? Do you, do you see uh, those sets where you are just multiplying and you don't have addition and subtraction? So in this case, I have that minus sign. So no, it's not in factored form, okay? So we have to deal with that. And the way we're going to deal with it, well, first we're going to practice it up here. If an equation is already written as a product of polynomials, or if it is not already written, we try to factor out a monomial that divides evenly into each term. Dividing is like factoring. So factor out the greatest common monomial, the biggest thing that will go into both of these terms. So what I do is I like to think of a number, 42 and 12. What goes into 42 and 12? If you're not good with your math facts, you're going to want to practice those. But what goes into 42 and 12 is 6. And then what goes into x cubed and x squared? And a quick hint to you is it's always the smaller, so as long as the variable is the same, it's always the one with a smaller degree. So in this case, x squared. That is the greatest common factor. Why do we need that? Well, if you have the greatest common factor, what you can do is you can write that outside of a set of parentheses and you could fill it in. 6 times what is 42? So that's 7. x squared times what is x cubed? Well, that's x. 6 times what is 12? Well, positive 2. x squared times what is x squared? Well, you don't need any more x's, so we're good there. So that would have been factored form right there, which is what we're trying to get to. Now, that's not what they're actually asking us to do up here. They just want to know the, the monomial, the greatest common monomial. But that's what we use it for there. Okay? So let's practice one more here. Uh, 7x squared and 63x. What goes into both 7 and 63? Well, 7 does. And what goes into both x squared and x? Well, the one with the smaller degree, so x. Then ask yourself, 7 times what is 7? Well, that's 1. x squared, or x times what is x squared? Well, that's x. 7 times what is negative 63? Well, that's negative 9. x times what is x? Well, it's 1. And you really don't need that, so we just leave it. In fact, you don't need this one. Okay. You have now factored that. The greatest common factor was 7x. Okay. Please note if you're checking this to see if you factored right, 7x times x is 7x squared, and 7x times 9 is 63x. Same thing here. 6 times 7 is 42. x squared times x is x cubed. 6 times 2 is 12, x squared times nothing. We just have our x squared. Okay, so let's use that skill to actually solve this equation by factoring. It's already equal 0, so we're good there. So you might want to make a note to yourself. Must 
equal zero. If it's not, you have to move things around first. Okay? And then we can, uh, what goes into 16 and 32? Well, 16. You always want the bigger thing. Like some people will go, well, 2 does and 4 does and 8 does, but the biggest thing that goes into it is 16. And what goes into x squared and x? Well, the one with the smaller power, so x. 16 times what is 16? Well, 1. And x times what is x squared? x. 16 times what is 30, negative 32? Negative 2. And we don't need another x. In fact, we can drop that one. And all that equals 0. So notice, you factored it now. Okay? You're back to these type of problems. Where you say, okay, well, this part has to equal 0. Which means x equals 0. And this part must equal 0. Which means x would have to equal 2. So my solutions would be x equals 0 and 2. Now i try one more. 4 and 28, what goes into both of those? Well, 4 does. x squared and x, well, we want the smaller power is x. 4 times what is 24? 6. x times what is x squared? x. 4 times what is 28? 7. And we don't need any more x's. All right. So here, if 4x equals 0, x is 0. And here, if 6x plus 7 equals 0, well, two steps. We subtract 7. We divide by 6. Those are my solutions. 0 and negative 7, 6. One more problem. Numerically, 7 and 19, those are both prime numbers. In other words, only one goes into those. We don't care about one. So no numbers. Well, how about variables? x squared and x? Well, we could put an x out here. x times what is 7x squared? Well, 7x. x times what is negative 19? x, negative 19. So this part would have to equal... 0, so there's one of our solutions. And this one here, 7x minus 19 equals 0. Well, you'd have to add 19. Add 19 and then divide by 7. So our solutions, x equals 0 and 19 over 7. All right. Now, they, I guess I didn't write this one in set notation, but that's okay. All right. I hope that helps out. Good lucky.